I've got my first two pieces of information that are important. I don't know what you call them, it doesn't matter all that much what you call them, as long as you call them something, and that what you've called them makes sense to you and is instructive, right? I've got the first year of sales, I've got the annual growth, and then they pose a question. I think they say, in which, is it in which year? Do the annual sales first exceed, I think it's a million dollars, isn't it? In which year do the sales first exceed a million dollars? So, just like we saw before, some formulas, or some questions rather, require the nth term, other ones require the sum of the first n terms. So which one is this going to be? Is it going to be S of n or T of n? Hmm. Read it, read it again if you're not sure. It says, in which year do annual sales first exceed? Right? So when they say annual sales, they mean a particular year, one year and only one year. So that tells you if it's the nth term, not the sum of the first n in terms. We're gonna to come to the sum in the next question, okay? So I'm just going to write t of n equals, and have you, think, have you thought about this, um, this guy here, right? See that 20%? It means that you're going up by a different amount each time. The further you are in the future, the more you're growing by. So this is not an AP, this is a GP, as we pointed out before. So that's why I'm going to use a different formula. Is that okay? Now I've just written this down, not because this gets me any marks, but it just gives my brain a scaffold to hang the numbers on that I need, okay? Now, don't write this down just yet. Strictly speaking, strictly speaking, probably the, the most technically correct way to write the next line is to say, I want this thing, a r to the n minus one, I want to exceed a million dollars, right? I want to exceed a million dollars. So strictly speaking, I should write this. Do you see that? Like I want that nth term to be more than a million dollars, okay? And there's no reason why you can't do that. Um, you'll come out with the answer and you'll be like, ta-da, here's a number and you'll be fine. However, for reasons that I'm gonna try and justify in about, I wanna say three, but it's maybe four lines, I'm going to not do that instead of forming an inequality, even though the question is about an inequality. I'm gonna just stick with an equation. It ends up making things a bit simpler, so just stay with me and I'll try and justify why, okay? A and R. I know what these are. I know what these are. Um, they're the two things that I wrote down up above, kind of. So I want A, 200,000, multiplied by R. Now, just be careful. What I'm going to put in here is not 20%. Because if I multiply by 20%, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I actually am growing, right? So I'm not multiplying by, multiplying by 20%. I'm multiplying by... 120%, that's what makes it bigger, okay? So instead of 120, I'm gonna write it as a decimal, 1.2, it's just faster, and um, it's less things to write down because 120% of course means 120 divided by 100. Okay, now n minus one, that's a bit I don't know, so I'm just gonna leave it there. And now what I'm gonna imagine is, suppose there's a year where I'm exactly equal to a million dollars. I actually want to know when it's more than a million dollars, but this is going to make things easier to solve for me on the next couple of lines. I want to simplify a little more, and I can see there's this huge common factor on both sides, so I will divide by 200,000. That gives me this. And now, think back to the last topic that you did. When you have a look at a question like this, what knowledge do we use to solve such a question? We use logs, right? So there's a couple of things you could do at this point. Probably the simplest would be just to rewrite this exponential equation as its equivalent log equation, which would be n minus one, there's the power, is log, now, which one is the base and which one is the other number that comes after? So if you can't remember, one of the nice ways to sort of give you a mental hook is to say the base here will become the base here. Does that make sense? And then the rest of the numbers just go in whatever spots are left. So I've got 1.2 here and five. Okay, um, just quickly, another way to know this is to say, okay, this is the number that I'm growing from, and that's what logs mean. Like when you have log base e, e is your growing rate. Well, 1.2 is my growing rate in this case. As it happens, I don't have a log base 1.2 button on my calculator, so I've got to do something else here in order to actually work out what this number is. So you've got your calculator there. What are you gonna do with this to make it usable by your calculator? Yeah, change of base law. So you can choose any base you like. You've got base 10 and base E on your calculator. I am lazy, so I'm going to write one letter less, which is base E. And I've got the five on the top and the 1.2 on the bottom, okay? 
Um, I don't actually want n minus 1, I want n. So I will add 1 to both sides. Is that okay? Right, now, reach for your calculator. It should give you a number. What do you got? 8.8. Okay, and then have you added 1? You've got 8 point, that's, that's this number, right? So 9.87 or something like that, is that right? Yeah. Uh, say it again. 9.827. 827, dot, 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 dot. Okay. Now, put your pen down for a moment and think with me. If I had written this as an inequality right at the beginning, right? At some, in some ways, I would have my answer now, right? Because I'd say, <coughs> excuse me, n has to be greater than 9.8, so the next year is going to clearly be 10, and there's your answer. Um, year 10, year 11, year 12, all of them would exceed a million dollars because you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, what was the reason why I chose to write an inequality rather than, sorry, an equation rather than an inequality? Where would I have written it? I would have written it here. I would have said, I want this to be greater than. I want this to be greater than. But then just look carefully at what happens here. Okay. Now, when you change from a log equation, sorry, an exponential equation to a log equation. You have to be really careful about what goes on each side if you have an inequality. Does that make sense? Because in an inequality, the two sides are different. That's what inequality means, right? So you can't just put them wherever you like. And students, what I find is, they get confused about which way they should write it, and they're like, uh, does this one go on this side or that side? And then they can get an inequality at the end, which is actually incorrect, right? Um, all, the, all the maths, all the numbers are correct, but they've just written the equation backwards, okay? Now, we can escape that, and this is why I did this, we can escape that problem by just sticking with an equation, right? In an equation, both sides are identical. That's what equation means. So therefore, it doesn't matter which way I write these around. I just have to interpret this answer at the end, okay? So now I can conclude. I can say, therefore, uh, after 10 years would be my answer. Or at the end of the 10th year. Uh, just check the wording of the question and it will tell you. Wait. Now, just one final note. I drew over here uh, this little set of axes. You don't have to draw it, but if you want, just draw a quick and dirty one on the side. Uh, the reason why we come up against this weirdness down here, that we have to interpret the answer and be a little careful with it, is because we're doing something which is called modeling. Now, We've looked at models before, back when we were doing max min, and we we're like, here's a situation with like some piece of wire and you want to make a fence out of it or something like that, right? Now what we've done here is we've used a model which is what we call a continuous model. It's continuous because have a look at which is the line I'm after? This line here. Have a look at this line, okay? It's an exponential function. And exponential functions, as you know, just look like that. It's one continuous function, right? And it's got no breaks. But we're using a continuous model to describe a discrete, not with a double E, which means like shh, discrete. Uh, discrete with two separate E's means it's separated out. You've got like integer values, like there's this year, and then there's the next year, and there's no in between. Right? So we're using this continuous model to describe a discrete situation. And there isn't any exact year where there's exactly a million dollars as you're coming out, right? If I went to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., right? If you looked for a million dollars, it would be between at 9.827. But there is no such year, and that's why I use this number and I go to the next year. Does that make sense? Now, Getting at this, why am I making a big deal about this? Getting at this will tell you the difference between do I just round, like this happens to round up, or actually, depending on the situation, depending how your model relates to the actual thing you're trying to solve, sometimes you will round down. Sometimes you'll say nine years, even though that clearly rounds up, because you're trying to solve a different kind of problem with your model. Does that make sense? We will come to those examples later on and I'll point them out to you and I'll wave a big flag just so you know, oh this is strange and unusual. But I'm just trying to point out the fact that it comes from us using sort of a not quite right tool for the job, but it's the closest one we've got. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? Happy? <laughs>